Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by MMA veteran John Gunderson. John, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. John, you got a fight coming up at Superior Cage Combat 4. How's training been going for the fight? Uh, it went good. It went good. I finished out my training uh, today, and so I'm ready to go. Just going to focus on cutting weight right now, and I'm on the fight. Your opponent, Justin Buckholds, a, f- a fellow UFC veteran, what are your thoughts on him as an opponent? He's tough. He's real tough. He's, uh, he's on a three-fight win streak. Um, he's looked impressive in the last couple of fights, so he's got some momentum. Uh, he comes from a good camp, so I'm sure he'll be prepared. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think he's a good fighter. He's a good athlete. Were you surprised that you were offered a title fight because your last fight, although it was in a, was in a different organization, you lost, and your other fight with Superior Cage Combat was a 160 catch weight. Were you surprised that you were offered a title fight? Uh, no, they actually offered it to me right then and there, right at the second Superior Cage Combat show, or the um, the one that I fought on, the Superior Cage Combat show that I fought on, that's when they offered me the, the fight right after Buckles had, had fought, and they came up to me and said, hey, do you want to fight? Justin to the title, he wants to fight to the title. I said, yeah, I'll do it. So we were actually supposed to fight in November for the title, but then he, he broke his hand. And so when I found out he broke his hand, um, at the last second, I took a I took a fight to Finland. I got a phone call, hey, you want to go out to Finland? And I actually didn't want to go, but uh, my buddy Steve Lopez was going out in the corner. Of him. They said, hey, do you want to fight? You know, and I called me to the out there where you're coming. I said, yeah, might as well. Steve Lopez has fought Justin Buckles before has he given you a little insight to his game or do you pretty much know what to expect seeing his you know, previous fights I cornered Steve for that fight I cornered Steve for that fight and I uh, and I did you know me and Steve actually talked a little bit about it because we're you know we're training partners and friends so I mean I got a little little bit of advice from him a little bit of tips on, on what he thought about Justin what are you going into this fight anticipating? Are you anticipating a lot of stand-up? Are you anticipating a lot of ground? Are you anticipating just a full mixed martial arts fight? What are you anticipating going into this fight? Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just anticipating 25 minutes of hell. Yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like it's going to be a tough fight uh, on both sides. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that you maybe overlook me and think that he can uh, he can take me out. But if, if you look, I've fought enough but tough guys in the last few years, and he's not above any of those guys. Not above anyone that I can beat. Um, but that being said, he's got good, good conditioning. He seems to be getting better and better, and believing in himself. But I still think he's got some major, major holes in his game that I can exploit, and I feel like that I'm able to do that. I think that we match up well. I mean, I, I, I don't see it going 25 minutes. I think one of us is going to get finished. I mean, I'm no, I'm no idiot. I know he can finish me at any point in the fight, and I know that I can do the same to him. So. I know you can't reveal too much, but what would your game plan be going into this fight? Just to make it a war. Just to make it a war. That's my, uh, that's my plan. I'm going to get after him. I mean, I'm, looking, I'm looking to take him down and, and, and put him away. I mean, I, I just don't think he's got the, the submission game. I really don't. Um, I, know, I know he's dangerous standing up, but uh, anything just on the ground. I think, I think uh, one outweighs the other one a lot. I think he's a lot better standing up than he is on the ground. You're 2-2 two and two since leaving the UFC. You had 40 fights outside of the UFC. What is life like outside of the UFC? What are some differences? Obviously, there's more exposure in the UFC, but what is life like outside the UFC? Uh, you know, it's just different. I mean, in the UFC, you know, you're making a lot more money. It's just a good organization. They'll take care of you. Um, life like out, outside of the UFC, you're just trying to climb back into it. You know, all it is is you're only good as your last fight. And I'm one of those kind of guys, I don't turn down fights, and I'll take fights, and I, I don't pull out of fights, I really don't, and I, I've taken fights that I feel like I have a few losses where if I just would have not fought and pulled out, you know, I, I, I would have never had that fight, and I would have never lost, of course, but, you know, I'm not that kind of person, I can't look myself in the mirror and pull out of a fight, if, if I say I'm going to fight, I'm going to be there whether I'm sick, whether I'm hurt, whatever, and, you know, if I can physically get there and show up to fight, I'm going to fight. Usually, when a fighter wins their UFC debut, you know, lose two in a row, they get another chance. You, you lost your debut, you won your second fight, you lost your third fight, and 
you, you were cut. Do you feel that you got a, a fair shake with the UFC, or do you feel like you, you deserved at least one more opportunity? Do you feel if you get a win um, against Justin Buckles that you deserve another opportunity in the UFC, or do you think you'll have to do a couple more wins? What exactly do you think you'll have to do to get back there? I, in my opinion, I feel like I beat Justin Buckles. Justin, I feel like if Justin Buckles beats me, he's going to go back to the UFC because he's been coming off two UFC veterans, um, another high-caliber prospect he just beat, and before that he beat pretty tough guy so I think he's going back I think me they may take me back it was short notice but I need someone last second otherwise they're going to want me to climb the ladder back in and, and, and have a couple more wins because I did lost two fights outside the UFC one in Finland but to a tough guy and then one in California again to another tough guy wish I could take that one back but can't so and at this point in time I'm not really you know, if it happens, it happens. I don't care if it does, and I don't care if it doesn't. To be honest with you, I don't, I'm not. I'm not fighting to uh, to fight in the UFC. That's that's really not what I'm doing. You're fighting very close to home. It's at the Orleans Arena, which is in Las Vegas. You're based out of Las Vegas. What is your routine like when you're fighting at home? And how does it differ from when you're on the road? Obviously, you're way closer. But what what is your routine going to be like the day of the fight? Oh, it's good. Um, you know, my basically my routine for it, and the whole reason why I'm fighting is here. And I, I chose this fight, to be honest with you, was to be, was to fight in Las Vegas and make a bigger name for, for myself in Las Vegas. The more I fight in Las Vegas, the, I'm a personal trainer out here, I run a gym out here, so um, the more I fight out here, the bigger my name to get, and that's the reason why I do it. And it's easier for me to have kids, and I don't have to set up babysitters for them, and they can still go to school, and I can, you know, train twice a day, and then the day of the fight, you know, I can wake up in my own bed and be focused, and and have everything that I need and just and just my daily routine like I'm going to the gym and, and you know on Thursdays and Tuesdays when I go to Extreme Couture when I leave my house to head to the gym I know that I'm leaving my house to head to war because I'm going against some of the best fighters in the world every day in that gym so it's, it's nothing different with this fight it's just you know you're going with him and Agos and you're going to try to put each other away that's, that's the only difference 
does it mean a lot for you to have a championship belt or to be champion? What means more to you? Having a belt that signifies that you are the top guy, being champion, or does it really not matter to you just as long as you're competing and you know getting fights? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me, to be honest. I've won it, but you know, I, I fought for the IFL title. I fought for so many different titles. Um, I was given the opportunity to fight Josh Thompson for the strike force title before um, when I had to pull out of there and play Glee to step in. Um, I fought for, you know, I won the sport fight title, I won the arena fight title, I've won so many different titles and, and fought for so many titles and lost a few decisions that it really, you know, I've, I've got eight or nine belts hanging in, in, in my garage and, you know, they'll, they'll mean something when I guess when I'm, when I'm older and I can show my grandkids, but at this point in time, they don't really, they don't really mean shit to me, to be honest with you. I mean, it was, except for memories, which, which is cool, but it's just a fight. To fight that person is what, is what, means something to me. To be honest, to me, I feel like if I, you know, you know when I win this fight, um, I still feel like the top lightweight in SEC didn't fight. And, you know, in my opinion, the top lightweight in SEC is John Alessio, and I feel like Justin Buckles would rather fight me than John Alessio. So, you know, uh, I'll step up and, and I'll be and I'll get him there. If after this fight, you don't go back to the UFC, you beat Justin Buckles, you got the belt, John Alessio's the, the next guy in line, you've trained with him before, would you have any problem fighting him? No, I would never fight John. We're, we're teammates, we're training partners, we're good friends. Um, you know, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not into that. I'm not, I'm not into that point in my career where I'm willing to fight anyone that I train with or I have any kind of ties with. I'm just, it doesn't mean that much to me. In any organization, no matter what, I don't care. I don't. I'm not gonna. I fight my friends enough in the gym, and you know, I'm not. That's not what I'm in this for. What is exactly going on with your nickname situation? Because some people still call you Quick Guns. Some people have just shortened it to Guns. What What is the official nickname you're going by now? You know, it's kind of always been. It was Quick Guns, like when I was younger, when I was boxing, and then it just kind of stuck. And then people just call me Guns. It's just, it's just easier. Guns, Guns is just always, literally, for the last seven years, it's been Guns, but. Once in a while, you still hear the quick guns, and I mean, ever, even since I was a little kid, it was always guns, just because um, the last name was Gunderson, and I was always fighting, and and I was always, you know, I was always the first one to punch somebody, and it was just easy for people to remind me, you know, to, to remind uh, them of, of me, and just call me guns, it was just, I mean, every time I was little, guns, 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 so, I mean, to me, it doesn't really matter, um, I'm obviously not as quick as I used to be. I'm 30, almost 33, so, you know, and guns sound just fine to me. And if I ain't knocked anybody out in a while, my name should be quick guns. It's got a good ring to it, I must say. Is, is does, the, and, you know, I had it while I was boxing, and, you know, it meant something to me back then. But, you know, it doesn't, when it's not paying out in the, in the future, then, then, you know, it's not, it's not that much. Is the gun store a sponsor of yours? They are. Oh, good. Perfect. The trifecta. Yeah, I like it. I was actually the second guy they ever sponsored. Really? That's interesting. Yep. Interesting. They're good. They're good. good people. Yeah. Do you have a prediction for your fight at Superior Cage Combat 4? I think it's going to be an exciting fight. I really feel like I can finish them. At some point in time, before, uh, before the first round's up, I think I'm going to finish them. Some way or another. I'm going to end up finishing them. That doesn't mean I'm not going to take any damage. I know I plan on uh, going to the emergency room after the fight, but I, I hope that I can look right next on the other side of the curtain and see him too. So that's that's my mentality going into this fight, just biting down on mouthpiece and getting after it. I know it's going to be a tough fight. I know he's coming to take my fucking head off. So you better be uh, ready for the same thing. We've already plugged the gun store. Are there any other sponsors you'd like to thank, and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? John, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Good luck against Justin Buckholds at Superior Cage Combat 4. All right, buddy. Thanks a lot, man. You have a good one.